Today on The Breakfast, our stakeholders ask Lagos State Government to hold the April 1 planned reopening of tolling of the Lekki Eco Link Bridge by the Lekki Concession Company as government urges residents to show understanding. In the wake of Nigeria's failure to qualify for the World Cup in Qatar, fans ask NFF President Amaju Pinik to resign amid coach Ersene Guavo stepping down. What's next for the NFF? And we will be analyzing all of the biggest stories of major dailies across the country with an analyst. Good morning to you in Lagos, Abuja, Nigeria, Africa, all over the world, wherever you're watching us from. This is The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. And I am Messi Bopo. A beautiful morning. It feels really great to be back on your screen. Yes, my favorite day of the week. <laughs> it's Friday and we are thanking God. Messi, like I always ask you every Friday, what are you doing for the weekend? Are you sure you, you want to hear? Talking. No, are you sure you, you want to hear? You better start talking. No, basically. With all of this fine makeup, what are you doing after the show? Get a lot of rest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sleep. Get more sleep and sleep. Okay, it's good. Yeah, mm. you want to have your beauty sleep so you can come and look more beautiful by Monday and all. You understand. That's a good plan. So you understand already. Mm, I do. I do. Uh, unfortunately, men can't have beauty sleeps. Says what? <laughs> do we have beauty or handsome sleeps? <laughs> If you sleep, sleep is sleep. It translates to whatever it is. Well, the role of sleep can not be overemphasized. Sometimes we just need to take a break and just relax and refresh again as much as we can. But we're not talking about sleep or sleep disorder or sleep apnea or whatever it is on the show. We are talking about what is trending on social media. And the federal government is in the news again. Uh, it is uh, seeking financial support for patient treatment. As the patient uh, uh, that were involved in the Kaduna Abuja rain a train attack and so far you know nigeria and uh, kaduna residents uh, are just blasted the uh, federal government you know seeking for financial support and most people would say after god you know it is uh, the government so if the government is seeking financial support what exactly uh, is the government telling us that they cannot really cater to the needs of residents or what exactly is the issue mercy you're smiling so, so um, first of all, if that's anything to go by, mm. one would begin to say that the federal government should not and cannot ask Nigerians uh, to contribute to take care of uh, those who actually or patients who are actually being treated currently at the hospital following the attack on the train, the uh, Buja Kaduna uh, train attack, right? Uh, that's what it would be. Well, because um, if you say that, don't, don't forget that recently, the federal government donated $1 billion to Afghanistan. I mean, we're talking about the Taliban here to use for humanitarian Please. issues, to mm -hmm. ease humanitarian yeah, concern. And, what have you. and so I don't think that the federal government is really, really asking Nigerians So what are they to, saying, really? So yesterday, because that statement was actually, I'm going to read it from right. a verified Twitter handle of, of the... Uh, uh, talking about the Minister for Transportation here, K Amechi, a uh, verified Twitter handle, and he says that we did not ask for contribution from Nigerians. I said <laughs> the Ministry of Transportation and the federal government are grateful to the Nigerian Army for providing free treatment for the injured and that the Nigerian Railway Corporation will liaise with the hospital management to cover all the expenses. Uh, that was, you know, the tweet that was put out on his verified Twitter handle. So mm. the thing cleared. But I was saying, on the other hand, if it's anything to go by, the government should not be asking Nigerians at this time. Because if you look at the current reality of our country, I mean, there's a lot to go by. There's a lot of, you know, difficulties, challenges. And plus the fact that we recently were very benevolent with, uh, you know, Afghanistan. I mean, we have money. That's what he means. We're rich. Uh, so government, our government cannot be asking Nigerians. It's not. It's it's totally not. You know, I, I don't see that happening. You know. <laughs> 
All right, so uh, the minister has come out uh, either to defend um, a statement because as it was widely reported uh, in, uh, in most dailies, uh, most dailies quoted him as saying that um, um, <laughs> he said as well on a visit to Fort Fort Nigerian Army Reference Hospital and had asked Nigerians to liaise, specifically that's what uh, you know the Daily Post uh, reported, to liaise with the hospital to contribute money at some of the patients or of, uh, for some of the patients who have bullets in their body and they may need injury. Well, well, he has come out to say that uh, he was uh, misrepresented, uh, he was misquoted, and uh, so he has clarified that. So let's just um, maybe take him for his words. Hmm. Yeah. And we have no reason to be asking for money now. Come we on. Are, uh, we are, we're, we're very rich now. Giant we have of Africa. Now. You uh, come out begging uh, for uh, money. It's uh, not uh, done uh, anyway. Uh, well, no, we don't. Uh, we can't be embarrassing ourselves, uh, you know, just on national dailies and uh, for the international community. All right, uh, let's move away from that one. Another, uh, you know, topic I'm trending on um, social media is uh, this uh, um, Arewa on Twitter. You know, Nigerians are reacting right now because uh, they have been seemingly, you know, silent over the issues in Kaduna State, the killings and all, you know, before now. They have been very, very vocal when it comes to issues that um, concern the North. I remember uh, uh, many hashtags that, um, you know, made, um, you know, that trended for a while, um, North Bleach and all of that, that, they were very, very, you know, visible they were very vocal, you know, in the fight or, or speaking for the voice of the Arawa people, that's the North, uh, for instance. Uh, but uh, somehow, you know, they have not really talked so, I don't know if they've even said anything concerning um, the killings that have, uh, you know, happened uh, recently in Kaduna State, uh, the attacks, uh, that uh, three attacks that happened uh, in the phase of one week. Um, but uh, right now, Nigerians are attacking them over us. Uh, what they said concerning some small issues, as it were, you know, where the major issues, they are always quick to talk about it. So what is happening you know, right now with the Arawa Twitter? Unless you want to say something concerning that. Well, the reaction is good. Just like you have actually mentioned, Nigerians have reacted as regards Arawa Twitter staying very silent on Kaduna killings and all that's going on. I mean, the killings in the northern part of Nigeria. Mm. Uh, you want to juxtapose that with how they have been very, um, you know, vocal and very expressive. Just yesterday or thereabout, there was, there was a certain lady mm. uh, that was on top of the chopping board and that they were crucifying. <laughs> the and mm. all of that. So, so, so it, it gets us to that point where people are saying, oh, what exactly is going on here? But for me, it would be that we do not have a unity of peoples. I mean, we are further divided every day. I remember a time where the hashtag, you know, when NSAS was a, a thing, everyone was tweeting and everyone was talking about it. Police brutality. I mean, that's exactly what it was. Yes. And I, on that particular micro blogging platform, you, 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 you would read tweets from um, those who are from, uh, you know, the northern part of Nigeria saying, oh, we, we haven't experienced police brutality here. But we don't have a sense of unity that's that's exactly what it is now because you know for whatever reason you just say because it's not happening to you doesn't mean it's it's, it's not happening mm. because you're not experiencing it does not mean that it's not happening and so if we, we we get to a point where we see ourselves as one that's the problem so we don't even know which is the major problem now in Nigeria. At the time you hear Chinachebe saying the problem with Nigeria is leadership. We don't even we have to understand that leadership is a problem. But should we say it's the problem of disunity, you know, or it's a problem of leadership or all of that? But you find out that we're not even united in any sense. Mm. Because it's not happening to you or because you have not experienced it, or for whatever reason, you just take some stands and say, you, you don't even say anything. Now, we, we, you already know the saying that when good people keep quiet, when there's silence, evil will continue to thrive. And we can't fold the arms and act like these things are not happening. And I would always say that Nigeria is bigger than any political party. 
It is not about the APC or the PDP or any other no, party they won't think them. about. And so usually you find out that we have a culture of wanting to politicize issues. Oh, it's because some people do not love President Muhammad Buhari. They don't like his face. It's because it's not from a certain group. And it's, That's not the po point. The point is Nigerians are going through stress. Nigerians are suffering. And we don't need to be necessarily, we don't even need to begin to make it about a particular region or a particular group of persons or a political party mm -hmm. and all of that. We would, we're bigger than that. The Nigerian entity is bigger than any formation, but that's what we have failed to see. Mm -hmm. And that's why you find out the silence, because we know they are were, they're very vocal on some issues. And just like I mentioned yesterday, they were very you know, strong on some other issues. Uh, uh, but who has said anything about the killings and the bombings and all of the incidents that's really going on in the northern part of Nigeria? No one said that. Directly. And that's why you know, a lot of Nigerians are speaking about it. The mm. point is we, we need to come to a point where we understand that we're a country. Mm -hmm. And so if it affects you know, the southern part of Nigeria, we should talk about it. But mm -hmm. we have not seen ourselves as a whole. Mm -hmm. And so because it doesn't happen in a certain region, it's it does not happen. It's not some, uh, it, it does not really happen some. entirely. So it's not obvious. And even yeah. when it's happening in your own region, you can't talk about it. Why are you not talking about it? It doesn't really? want to protect some interests as well. So until we grow beyond all of this personal interest, religious bias, sentiment, and political affiliation, then we are not even ready to ensure that this you know, project called Nigeria is workable. Mm. All right, uh, so we'll leave uh, the arrow at Twitter at that. Uh, but then what Messi has said, that the underlying thing is that sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, we have to be united you know, concerning things that, that affect us as a people. Uh, once it affects um, the North, it affects um, the, the South as, it's, as it is. So we are all um, one Nigeria. So, you know, sauce for the goose is also sauce for the Ganda. Let's just as much as try as much as possible try to, you know, be united on common issues. So that way we can actually forge ahead and you know act with one voice and that way our voices will actually resound. We'll move away from that. Uh, uh, well, let's talk about another issue that um, you know that, that piqued my interest again and it is also trending. Uh, in the wake of um, talks of um, gun control and um, people killing, you know, recklessly, arbitrarily in some Western countries, uh, how would that look if uh, Nigerians were allowed to bear arms? You know, Rep's uh, majority leader you know, is asking Al Hassan Ado Dogowa has called for Nigerians, you know, to be allowed to, you know, carry arms. Let me just read a little bit of it, then we'll now talk about it. You now, uh, he's Dogowa, a member of the All Progressives Congress, stated this on first day while speaking on a motion of urgent public importance moved by Shehu Balarabi. Balarabi had moved or moved the motion on the killing of 150 persons in Berni Gwari in Kaduna State. Also, Ahmed Nasser a member of the APC from Kano also called for the sack of the National Security Advisor. That's uh, other you know, issues that came out of all of that. But the main thing is that they are asking for Nigerians to bear arms. Is uh, that's the main solution to the insecurity challenges that we have? Fine, uh, a lot of people have been killed. If we are allowed to get um, gun um, licenses and all that, uh, some people say that it may uh, be uh, be used um, arbitrarily. Some people might just uh, go about on a shooting spree. Mercy, what are your thoughts concerning Nigerian bearing arms? So the, the, this is not the first time we're having this argument being put out. At the time, you also want to agree that you know the Minister of Defense was prescribing self-defense yeah. as a thing. And that has generated several conversations. Why should we be prescribing that? When the United States in 2015 said Nigeria, was going to be, Nigeria would collapse, uh, we have been described as a failed state. And yeah. some people said, oh, no, it's not. But if you want to look at the characteristics of a failed state, are we exhibiting all of that? Are we showing that? So it's a rhetoric question. I'm not hoping that you put an answer or I put an answer to that. But we need to ponder and think about, um, you know, whether we're a failed state or not. I would always make reference to the fact that the Constitution is very explicit. The number one reason why we have a government is that security is top-notch. And that's what it is. Section 14 explicitly states that. Security, protection of lives and property. property. And so if a government fails, how did we, how did we even generate to the point where we're even thinking that we should carry arms? Really? 
No, she doesn't when know that, uh, you have, if you look ourselves. at the Western world, for, for, for most of the time, you know, we like to emulate and we like to say, oh, the U.S., and we begin to mention countries. We're talk th those countries are talking about gun control at this point in time. And here we are, a country that's so disunited. I mean, don't tell me otherwise, because it's very obvious by our actions and our deeds, we can see it. Right? And yeah. so we're saying that we should carry, yes, of course, it might be that we should uh, carry arms so we are able to uh, defeat, attack the Boko Haram or defeat them, the bandits. Really, <laughs> really, really. So why do we even have the security architecture? We have the military. What's the role we in have, the first you know, place? The margin police and these persons are being paid salary. What exactly is going So let's collapse the entire system. <laughs> and let's go back to anarchy. Let's even go back uh, to the Stone no, Age no, where everyone is, like every that. man no is for himself. Man is we no, cannot. No, 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 it is no, not no, even, no, no. we're not even supposed to be having this kind of a conversation at this point in time for a country uh, if you want to see or for a democracy that's uh, nascent or you know, developing. Not we are growing at this state we have yeah, gone so beyond the teething state oh. so but we're not even supposed to have that because really how do you even explain it? Uh, there will be a lot uh, that will they go even on. even considered all of the consequences that can just come out of all of this? No, but be because people are feeling like, people are feeling that the government has failed. The reason why these conversations are on, or people would even suggest, and even the minister at the time of defense, uh, so, you know, once upon a time would even think about this self-defense as a way, it's because the entire system has failed. But we know that we know what to do. That's the point. Nothing is impossible. I'm not trying to sound very spiritual here. We know what to do. When there's a will, there's always a way. way. And it's because the government, the federal government of Nigeria, has, doesn't have the will to combat security issues. We're not saying we're going to get to a climb where security concerns are entirely, you know, way. We just live in a society where, you know, there's no crime and criminality. But we have but not. Going to get we to have. That? We Even have. So what are we trying to say? Go through one sort of it's issue it's really other. saddening that we we're already thinking in the light that you and I should begin to bear arms, and you know what that would happen. You yeah. know that you know uh, where there's so much violence and bitterness. Go to the micro uh, the micro blogging trap uh, platform. I'm talking about Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. And begin to see how people tweet. You see the things that come out. The venom. Just recently, you know the venom, the bitterness, how people are inhuman and insensitive. Recently, uh, following the attack on the Kaduna Buja train, mm. I mean the the train that was you know coming to Lagos. And the, the lady, the lady that uh, tweeted, the doctor who tweeted that, oh, I have just been shot, please play for me. I saw several tweets and reaction response to that tweet. And some people say, are you dead now? Um, well, okay, when are you dying? You know? That's so this, this, this is the, so we're, we're at this point, we're now saying that we should give arms to this kind of persons. Uh, that will shoot you at the slightest, at the slightest provocation. provocation. They'll just shoot. And we'll all be dead. A lot of things I, that I could probably come will up. be here with a gun and shoot Shei. <laughs> I, 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 know, I, know, I know there's no <laughs> love lost between you and Shei, but then uh, you should temper justice with mercy because Shei uh, is fragile. You just want to handle with care. No, that, that's not the point. <laughs> We're saying that <laughs> we, we, we haven't even gotten to the point where we, all right. we understand humanity and we even consider ourselves as humans mm. or even love ourselves as that we're Nigerians. And it's, it's not even a conversation that should be considered. No, it's not. It's at not. every level. Because and we, I would feel of, really embarrassed that you have a lot of persons. We understand the frustration with mm. the fact that insecurity is a major issue. But asking that Nigerians should carry arms to defend themselves is not the solution. Because it would be abused, not just abuse. Uh, anything could happen. Children might just uh, somehow you know, get uh, access to these um, uh arms you know the issues that have come out uh, in, in the united states with, uh, with um, the shootings and killing sometimes those um, guns belong to the to the to the to the parents of these children next thing they bring these guns to school and when one of their co or fellow students you know provoke them as next thing what they see in the movies they just tend to carry that they just start going on just going no, no, to shoot that's the truth so I, I do have a very personal story as regards you know that mm. gun issue uh, where a certain cousin whose father was in the police and the young boy actually picked up the gun. It was a very dramatic incident. Whoa. And it was still part of what you see, you see in the movies. And then he was pointing it. Everybody, the gun actually. was actually, you know, it was loaded. It, it had oh, nine bullets. What do you expect? You go, it doesn't matter who is holding the gun. You will go on your knees 
and beg. He had to be a serious one so he doesn't even pull the trigger. Oh. He probably might not even know what it is. Probably looking at Superman. Yes, might not even know what know, he's doing. Bruce Wills trying to act like Bruce Wills and Die any other hard. person. Kefa Sutherland. And you watch too much <laughs> movies for <in> mercy. <laughs> No, you're talking yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah, please. I know that our country is, I know it's not easy. There's a lot going on, but having us to carry arms. No, I don't, I don't think we should start bearing arms right now. It's not We're not ready for it. No, and even countries that are, we think that are even ready for it, they're even trying to find a way to control right. guns. So, yes, let's move away from. All right, that's as much as we can take on top trend. And she just be assured that the mercy isn't going to shoot you. By the way, she is uh, one of our guys uh, behind the scene. And uh, she, uh, he and the mercy are always having this back and forth. I'm not going to reveal the secrets right now on air. We'll take a break. We'll go to off the press in a moment. Do join us again. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa.